Okay, measuring tools. What does that even mean to measure a tool? Well, imagine the moment when I put this tool into the tool holder. I locked it into place with this amount of stick out, but what if I had locked it in with more stick out? The more stick out there is, the lower the bottom of this tool is hanging down from the spindle. And regardless of more or less stick out, we really just need to know how much and that is the topic of measuring a tool. How much does it hang below the spindle? So how do we go about measuring how far it hangs below the spindle? Well, we use this wireless tool probe. It has one special job to do, which is to stay immobile on the table at a consistent height, waiting to be bumped on the top of this hockey puck. At the moment it does get bumped, the mill records the Z position of the spindle and says, okay, I assume that this is the correct height to bring this tool when doing work. At that moment, you can consider the tool to be measured. And so long as the tool does not vibrate loose and change position within the tool assembly, it will remain measured for the duration of its life. So how do we bring the tool down onto the tool probe, especially if the tool probe is way over there? Well, load tool one into the spindle if you haven't already, and then come over to the controller and push the edit button. Navigate up to the top of the edit panel into the tabs and come over to VPS, Visual Probing System. Once there, come down to the probing option and hit the right arrow button to come forward into your offsets options and choose tool offsets since we're about to measure a tool. And then from your tool measurement options, choose auto length, non-rotating. And here choose means push the right arrow key to drill further into the menu. Now looking at the auto length non-rotating options, let's see what we've got. First, the auto length bit. That just means, hey Mill, please bring the tool above the tool probe and down onto it with no intervention on my part other than the promise that I really have put a tool into the spindle. Non-rotating just means that you're using a tool that is small enough that it will fit onto the top surface of the tool probe. All of our tools are going to be small enough to fit, so we will always choose auto length non-rotating. Okay, let's look at our measurement options. The first line tool number is set to one. If this is not a one, please stop here and let me know. You should be at this moment having just powered up the mill and worked through the tutorials to learn how to load a tool in. Nowhere along that journey should the tool number have changed from one. If it has changed, something has gone pretty seriously awry and we should pause here and figure out what happened. I'm seeing a one. If you're seeing a one, let's proceed. Press the down arrow to come to the next variable, tool type. I'm currently set to value four. Take a moment to look at how that number relates to all of these awesome tool types. Number one is a drill. Number two is a tap. Number three is a shell mill. Number four is an end mill. Number five is a spot drill. Number six is a ball nose end mill, and number seven is a probe. That is an overwhelming amount of tools to consider just now. So rest assured that tool one is always going to be carefully set up to be number four, an end mill. All you've got to do is confirm that your tool type is also set to a value of four. Now length. Look at the drawing above and notice how length, this L value, is a measurement from the collar of the tool holder down to the tip of the tool. And it really should say approximate length because all you're going to do is take a ruler and hold it up to the top of the collar of your tool holder and record the approximate length from that spot down to the bottom of your tool. And all we're going to do with this number at this point is, as a community of beginners, ask that we never load a tool that is longer than five inches. Okay, I measured 3.75 inches, so I'm going to type 3.75 into the mill and then I'm going to look to confirm that my orange highlight is still on the length variable and then I'm going to push the enter key way down there by the number pad. 
Good, now the final variable, diameter. As you really start building tools and loading them and measuring them, this is gonna become the nominal diameter of your tool. But for now, don't worry about what that means. Don't worry about trying to hold up your ruler and take a guess at what the diameter of the tool is. You can just enter 0.375. This is a 3 8 end mill whose decimal equivalent of that diameter is 0.375. Okay, now the actual measuring. Look up here and you'll see this cryptic command, run in MDI, and then in square brackets, cycle start. What does this mean? It means when you've entered the information for your tool variables, you're ready to push cycle start, which is gonna run the measuring program. And if you push cycle start before closing the door, notice how the mill gives you a helpful warning message. Door open, and again, door is open. Just slide the door closed, push cycle start again, and things are gonna start happening. And because there's movement in the mill, keep your thumb over the feed hold button. And push that feed hold button if you don't see the following milestones. First, look for the table to move such that the table probe lines up directly underneath your tool. Look for this wireless receiver light to turn green at the same time that the spindle starts descending. Push the feed hold button just to confirm that you really can halt the movement whenever you want. Repeat this process of pushing cycle start and then immediately pushing feed hold as quick as you can afterwards and watch the spindle creep down a little bit at a time towards the table probe. You're practicing your ability to creep up on a moment that you wanna look closely at. You're getting close so that you can see very easily that the tool really is lined up with the table probe and you're giving yourself one last chance to ask, is there a tool actually loaded into the spindle? If there isn't, the spindle's gonna descend over the table probe and crush it beyond recognition. And the table probe costs more than $4,000, so we need to work together to keep it alive. This is also your last chance to haul the supervisor over to ask if your setup looks ready to go. So do that before proceeding. And when the supervisor says, that looks great, hit the cycle start button, go ahead and hit it. You're gonna see two touch points. One with some movement and one with barely perceptible movement. Good, this tool has now been measured. It is valid. It can stay in the mill and it can do work. Where did the measurement go? Well, push this offset button and then look up at where we are. And if you're not in the tool tab, just navigate up and over to the tool tab so that your screen looks like mine. Your number's gonna be different. What's important is that you're looking at and that you've highlighted tool one and that the word spindle is next to tool one, indicating that we're all looking at the tool in the spindle and the number under the length geometry column corresponding to that tool. And look at the number itself. Mine is 3.8379. That's pretty close to what I estimated at 3.75. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And how do we talk about these numbers? What units do we use? Well, these are inches. These are tenths of an inch. These are hundredths of an inch. These are thousandths of an inch, the most common unit that we're going to talk about. And this last one is tenths of a thousandth of an inch, colloquially referred to as tenths. The CNC mill is accurate down to a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. And you can confirm that quite easily. Take a photograph of this screen showing your number at the mill. Then run the tool measurement program again and photograph your new number. The first time I measured the tool, I got 3.8379 inches long. And the second time I ran it, I got 3.8378 inches long. This measured difference of 0 0.0001 helps confirm the accuracy of the two systems at play. The accuracy of the mill itself, which is moving the tool around, and the probing system, which is sending a trigger signal at the moment of contact. With the errors of those two systems combined, I would expect a difference of around one or two tenths. So find that same difference yourself. Remeasure your tool until you're able to capture a slight difference of one or two tenths. If you're capturing way more than that, five tenths, eight tenths, a whole thousandth of an inch, work with the helper to try to figure out why. 
And if coincidentally, your two measurements are exactly the same, remeasure a couple more times until you get a slight difference. And if you really can't get a slight difference, unload and reload the tool and then remeasure until you're able to generate a slight difference. This process of remeasuring develops confidence in that number and in the systems that you're working with. If you simply measure once and walk away, there is no engineer on earth who's going to trust that your process is robust robust enough to be trusted. Good. Measuring tools is what allows everything else to happen, and now you know how to do it. If you're walking away at this point, take the tool out of the mill and put it back on the rack, but if you're continuing on, leave that tool in there. We'll need it for the next step.